Hey guys, guess what? I'm headed to the show of shows in Louisville, Kentucky. I'm actually leaving tomorrow, but the guys are packing up and leaving today to get there in time for setup on Wednesday night. Now, I'm gonna be taking a lot of guns for you to see, but also attending the party. For those of you who attend the party, I have this assortment of guns that I'm gonna have on display. Now, you can't tell what's in all of these boxes, but if you come to the show, you'll find out. And uh, it's just some stuff from my personal collection. Will not be for sale, but well worth the cost of admission to check them out. Uh, if you're not able to attend, Randy, who some of you thought was fired for inhaling, was not fired. In fact, he will be at the party. He will be filming uh, most of these items uh, that'll be out on display. So for those of you who can't make it, I feel your pain, uh, but at least you'll be able to see what happened at the show, including a raffle and a lot of partying. Second topic is the Gundies. Very depressing for me. I know all of you thought I should win, um, I won't say I thought I should win because there's a lot of stiff competition, but congratulations to Grantham. I do watch his channel and he does a great job. Congratulations on him being the gun reviewer of the year. I'm working on next year, kind of like the Eagles season uh, or your home team season, wait till next year. Okay, here's what's on store for today. I have all of these P38s. These uh, all but I think one came out of a collection. I picked up a high-end collection, really cool stuff. And I'm taking all of these guns to the SOS show. In fact, uh, the reason I'm doing this video now is we're gonna throw them in the back of the truck and get, we're not gonna throw them. We'll place them neatly in the back of the truck and take them to Louisville. But I thought I'd show them to you in case you're going to miss it. Plus, it's a great education. Now, I've already done videos on P-38s, and we went over the fact that the first ones were made by Walther starting in 39, full production in 1940. Then in 1942, Mauser started to make them, and then finally, uh, Spreework began to make them, and all three companies made them all the way up until 1945. So I've already covered that information. That's a real broad brush. But many of you collectors also know that there were other factories that made parts for the P-38, and that's why I wanted to show you these, because it's quite an education. So for example, uh, I'm gonna show you frames and slides that were made by the FN factory. You know the high power, the FN factory in Belgium. They actually made parts, slides, and frames for both Mauser and a very few to the Spreework factory, and they happen to have some of those rare variations. Also, the FNH factory, which is in Czechoslovakia, you remember them. Remember this gun with the extended barrel? I'm taking this to Louisville as well, but we showed you a picture of the uh, Eagle 76 proof and then off also the FNH. And that's what you will find on AC 45. So Walther 1945 in the B block, almost all of them were made in the FNH factory, but also A block, C block, you'll see a few. Uh, scattered about. But if you find an AC-45 in the B block, the barrels are very distinct. Look how crappy this barrel looks. They were very poorly made. And so this barrel is very, very crude. So you'll be able to recognize that at a gun show just by looking at the barrel from the exterior. But if you take the gun apart, you will see that it is Eagle 76 proof, as, uh, same as the CZ-27, uh, but also the barrel is marked with the FNH. So again, nuances that you can learn about and there's, uh, they are rare variations. Also, I keep looking over here because my other prop is, of course, I have to recommend the uh, P38 book. If you wanna collect P38s, this is your best first investment to buy the book. We will have these at the show. And actually, Alex, the author, Alex will be at the show. He's already contacted me and said he's gonna be there and he's gonna bring me some stuff. So we're looking forward to that. Okay, so these are lined up, and there were actually a lot more, because, but there was a lot of duplicates. So from the earliest, and this one actually is from my, my collection, uh, but so starting here, all of these came in the same collection. These are from the earliest production to the latest, so you'll see the transition from early to late. And this background, see that uh, uh, 1902 Luru carbine? Uh, I'm bringing that to the show too. I have a couple people interested in that. So if you're at the show, come by and uh, check that out. That's a pretty rare gun. Back to P-38s. Here's the first one I wanted to show you. Okay, this one will rock your world. This is a zero prefix. So those of you who study the Walders, this is a military contract. It's the only one that has the Walder banner. After that, they just do AC-40, AC-41, etc. Uh, but this is a military contract. You can see the three proofs. 
a Waffen proof military acceptance, uh, which is under the blue, and then the test proof in the middle, and then the final acceptance, which is over the blue. So this is exactly right. Um, look at the grip straps on this. Those of you who know these, this, this is made in uh, late 39 or early 40. Uh, the grips are different than the standard grips. It's a unique grip. Here's what makes this so special, not only the finish. I'll take a look at the top. Notice the dull top. We've talked about that before. Every small part is Waffen stamp, by the way. You see the Waffen stamp. There's one under here. There's one under here. The top uh, plate. This top plate is dull, and that's to stop the reflection of the sun when you're aiming. But everything else on this gun is a high polish finish. Uh, again, what makes this so special? Check this out. Two matching magazines numbered on the side. Now note, they're numbered on the side because each year they are done differently. 19, uh, generally 39 and 40, they numbered them on the slide and you see the plus mark on the extra. Uh, these are a dull finish and that's the way they all are with a high polished bottom. Um, and you can see that matches the gun right here. I am taking this gun to Louisville to the party for show and tell. It will not be for sale. Now, starting out with this collection we just picked up, you will see uh, this is an AC-41. Notice the high polish finish. Uh, notice the dull top. You guys are learning this stuff, picking it up really quickly. Uh, also a stamp under the finish, then the test stamp uh, firing proof over the finish, and then the final one is over the finish. You really need a magnifying glass to know for sure. Also, these grips will be numbered to the gun because it's an early D-block. Notice the overstamp. I get questions almost every week saying, is this fake? Mine is overstamped. Uh, overstamps happen all the time in the Walder factory, actually all the factory. They were making them for war, not for collectors. I say that over and over again because people say, uh, you know, this stamp will be uh, crooked and people say, oh, the Germans were fastidious. They never would let that happen. Of course they did. They were making them for war, not for collectors. Um, this uh, has a matching magazine. I'll show you the magazine. Again, you see dull finish, but a high polish bottom. And you'll notice one match magazine. And now in 41, instead of them being numbered on the side, they're numbered on the toe, the bottom on the toe. And this is just a beautiful gun. This will be going to Louisville, uh, will be for sale there. Uh, you will see the, the proof marks here. They're under here, under here. Uh, they're right here and on the top plate. So every, every part uh, has a Waffen stamp. Uh, that, by the way, started to go away in 42, which is the next one I wanted to show you. Now, this is, this is um, really a great shot for you to, to study and uh, know. There's a lot to be learned right here, and here's what it is. Started out in 1941, early in the uh, ABCD block. This is an early gun. But they, all, they went all the way to the J block, H-I-J. Uh, yes, they went all the way to the J block. And in the J block, the, the finish began to deteriorate, meaning they didn't use as high a polish. It became uh, more dull. And then we get to AC-42, and now you see how much the finish has dulled down. Now, this is uh, really good information for all of you who write me on a regular basis with the serial number of your Walther PP or PPK, and that you say, when was my gun made? Well, right here, they had the exact same finishes in the Walther factory for the PP and the PPK. So a high polish gun had to be 41 or before. A dulled down gun can be 42 or after, and this is one of the lines of demarcation, we'll call it. Uh, but you can see the change in the finish. Look at the front straps. Still a beautiful gun but a completely different finish. You see the same proof marks uh, right here and the top plate. Now it is no longer Waffen stamped. The hammer is no longer Waffen stamped. The grips are no longer Waffen stamped because now they're, they're, uh, the war is um, intensifying in 42, of course. Uh, the United States is in the war. They know that they're, they're, <laughs> the Germans have to start skipping steps. And one of the steps they uh, skipped was they didn't proof mark every part. Now you still see a proof mark right here. So some of the parts are still proof marked. Actually, this one is proof marked. And that's probably they're using up old parts that had previously been inspected. I hope that all makes sense to you, but let's keep moving. Now it's numbered on the bottom. You notice it's matching the gun. 
And, uh, but this time, instead of being on the toe, so here you go, um, instead of being on the toe of the gun, this is a 41 magazine, and this is a 42 magazine. Now, keep in mind, it, they stop numbering in the C block. So the, you won't find uh, any number from D block on. So in 1942, no prefix, A, B, C were numbered, and then after that, they no longer numbered them. And again, it was just because they're cutting steps. Somebody in, the, you know, they had one of those conference table meetings and they said, how can we save money and time? And some really smart guy raised their hand and said, I got an idea, let's stop numbering the magazines. And so that's what they did in 1942 in the C block. All right, next we're gonna take a look at AC-43. However, this is the standard AC-43, um, and AC, of course, standing for wall. There, here's a standard one. And what's important to note is the size of the AC and the, and the 43. And this, by the way, is called stacked. They also have a straight line. Um, so there's an AC-43 stacked, and here's an AC-43 state straight line, and these are made by Walder. This, however, and I didn't get, uh, I didn't, I'm not showing you some of the standard ones other than photographs, but this one is very unusual. Notice the AC-43, and most non-collectors will say, oh, I looked it up and found out that this was made in the Walder factory. And the fact is, that's not true. Then other people say, it must be mismatched, because if you look at the proof, it's Waffen 135, which is Mauser. Remember, Walther would be Eagle 359. This is Waffen 135. <laughs> Excuse my confusion. My brain doesn't move as fast as my mouth. Uh, but notice the, the point of this. Look at the larger AC. That indicates this is made in the FN factory. Now, if the frame is made in the FN factory, the easiest way to tell is you will see the Eagle 140 proof. Now that is the proof mark for the inspector in the FN factory in Belgium because that's where you see the Browning high powers. Remember, most of them are going to be 140 proofed. In fact, the 1922 FN also 140 proofed. And here is a P38 with a 140 proof. And you can see um, that this, this frame was therefore made by the FN, the people at FN, and then shipped to Mauser for assembly. This frame that we're looking at now was made in Mauser and all the other parts, this is made in Mauser. The only thing that was made by the FN factory was the slide and the only way to tell is the larger AC-43. Uh, Why they did that, I can't tell you. Uh, all I can say is a AC was already being used by Walder and yet uh, these uh, slides went to the Mauser factory. Now this one is a little bit unusual, it is Waffen stamp, but when we turn it over, we see it is Eagle F, which means it went to the police. This is a very rare variation, a couple things about it. One, FN slide, very rare. Two, Eagle F went to the police, even more rare. And three, it's a dual tone. A dual tone means phosphate, frame. I believe this is blued although it could be dark phosphate, this is definitely blued. You can see the barrel is definitely blued. So basically it's phosphate and blued parts, also known as dual tone. And the dual tones tend to be no suffix all the way up, I believe, to the D block. You'll see dual tones. And then they go back to uh, regular blued finish. Uh, we're gonna see more of these, uh, but this is also unique um, Mauser grips. They're, well, they're called Mauser grips. They weren't made by Mauser, but they were used by Mauser. Uh, and it's a little bit different material than the standard Walder and uh, Spree work grips, which have a, a reddish hue, a reddish color, versus the uh, dark black, shiny uh, ones made by Mauser. This particular P38 came with a letter from the son of the vet. And he says in this letter, my father's name was Willard Bumgardner. He served in World War II as an army sergeant. From childhood, I only remember a decorated dress uniform hanging in the hall closet with sergeant stripes on the sleeve and a patch that I think represented the 44th Infantry Division. There was also a box of medals, two of which I remember, a purple heart and a bronze star was among them. It was odd to me that my father never openly talked or shared details about the war. 
It was only through my conversations with his brother that I learned my father was on the front lines and went through a lot. Even when I grew up and tried to talk to him, he would either change the subject or become oddly emotional. A few years before his death, he divided up some of his personal belongings that he wanted to give to each of his sons. I received this P-38 pistol that he brought back from World War II, which has been in the family until I sold it to you. I would like to know more about that time in my father's life, but he would never discuss anything. We've heard stories like this time and time again about the vets and how they didn't talk about their time in the service. And that was from Jim Bumgarner. Okay, BYF44. You see no suffix. What I like about this one, it is number 5,000, even number. I have a collector who likes even numbers. I'm taking this to Louisville to show him. I'm fairly certain he will end up buying it. But again, dual tone, you see um, it's no suffix. It is, you probably can't see it, but that is a 135 proof. And then we turn it over, you see 135 proof for the military, but it ended up going to the police, another Eagle F dual tone. Um, I'm popping these out like it's no big deal, but these are very, very rare. This is definitely um, phosphate finish, and this is definitely phosphate finish, and this is definitely blue. If I look at the last one I, I mentioned, I, can, I can't say for sure because this one is real obvious that the slide, the top one slide is definitely phosphate. The bottom one, I've had advanced collectors say, you know, that could be a dull blue. It's just really hard to tell. But the barrel, it's still a dual tone, and that's, that's what's important. They did make some that were all phosphate, which would include the barrel, uh, and they are even more rare. So these are just highly collectible guns, very cool to look at. You do see the Mauser grips as well. Uh, we should look at magazines. Uh, U uh, is late, so that's probably 19, late 44, early 45. Uh, the U means unhardened, and that was another uh, step that they skipped. That same guy that came up with the good idea about the numbering of the mag, he's the one that said, I got an idea. Let's not harden the magazines. <laughs> I don't know if that turned out well for them. Uh, maybe the magazines didn't function as well. This one is not marked, just P38, and there is a proof mark here, which is actually um, Walder 359. Now, uh, collectors sometimes will get this and say, Tom, I bought this gun from you, but it has the wrong magazine. I don't mess with history. All three factories were ch sending parts, uh, and actually other, these were made in uh, different locations. And so they sent these magazines to all three companies, and all three companies sent parts to the other companies. And you can see the correspondence between the uh, directors of the different factories saying, hey, can you send me a couple thousand of these? And he says, sure, I need some grips. So they regularly sent uh, parts back and forth. So don't get, all, um, don't get all anal. Unless it's a hanal magazine, then you can get anal. But don't get all anal about the proof marks when it comes to the, the magazine and even the grips. You will see Mauser with Walder grips and vice versa. Um, and that's just a, a beautiful gun. Uh, police, already showed you that one, also police, but this one is also Waffen proofed. So it just means it was accepted by the military, but then the police came in and said, hey, I need 300 more guns, and they grabbed them off the factory. Okay, another one, BYF 44, uh, no suffix, so um, this was could be dual tone, and sure enough, it is. This is definitely phosphate, this is definitely phosphate, this is definitely blued. And you can also see an Eagle F. It's just rarely rare to have a single Eagle F in your collection. Uh, this guy had at least three. There, uh, there might have been one other one. The magazine is uh, Eagle 135. So this is a Mauser magazine in a Mauser pistol, BYF, Mauser pistol. And notice it has um, Walther grips. So the red Walther grips with a Mauser gun. Don't swap them out. That's probably the way it left the factory. And by the way, for years I knew people who would swap these out. Then they came up with the, the actual uh, letters that said in 1944, uh, Mauser ran out of gr grips, and so asked Walder, and Walder sent them thousands of grips that went on the 44s, 1944. Okay, another Mauser, uh, BYF 44. Uh, this is in the D block, which is the last of the uh, dual tones. You see, this is phosphate, this is phosphate. I believe this slide is blued, and the 
um, and the barrel is blued as well. These, this is again in like new condition. And this is military. This is the um, Waffen 135 proof with a test proof in the middle, uh, but that is uh, correct. So this is straight military, more common than the police. Notice the, uh, the, mag, the mag release bottom is also phosphated. And look at the magazine, that's a phosphated mag. Ma uh, phosphated mags are extremely rare. If I were to sell this mag by itself, it would be uh, four to $500. The U unhardened, and they really made it big. Uh, we could say that's for a U-boat, but it's not. It's uh, unhardened, and that's a phosphate magazine. Very, very rare. By the way, the JVD means it was made a uh, subcontractor for the spree work factory. So we've got uh, spree work and Mauser combining for on this particular gun. All right, this one will blow your minds. Uh, see the cog hammer? The, uh, we've talked about this before. That's 1945. Uh, and the zero prefix. This is a spree work gun, zero prefix, cog hammer, 1945. You can see the serrations on this hammer was finer, uh, but on um, all three companies went to a cog hammer. Again, it probably cost less money. Now we're talking about saving uh, pennies on, on uh, you know, construction or assembly of these guns, and yet they went to the trouble to change the design in 1945, again, to save money. Now, uh, this is a spree work grip, and the zero prefix is spree work, and yet you see the AC-43. Now, the gun was made in 45. What's it doing with an AC-43? If you've been paying attention and didn't fall asleep on me, um, you know that this, this slide was made in the FN factory in Belgium and shipped to spree work, and then spree work uh, finished the assembly and numbered them to match along with the barrel that's matching. And you see the, the uh, proof mark should be Eagle 88. You can barely read them. Uh, by the way, the M and the U also is a, a proof mark that is used in the FN factory. Uh, so this is extremely rare and uh, uh, it is an AC. People say, oh, this is made by Walther. Nope, FN, large AC. And the magazine, actually that's an early magazine, uh, P38 and it is uh, spree work made. That is an early spree work magazine in a 1945 gun. Speaking of 1945, this is one of the last of uh, the Walders to be made. Remember the uh, last one was a zero prefix? This is a Walder zero prefix, cog hammer, only two proof stamps, which means it didn't even get the final inspection. They were rushing them out the door. Uh, this is very common for the late war guns, but this is one of the last ones made. Um, and you can see how crude it is. Uh, but notice there's, there's almost a rainbow or a fire blue look. And that just, uh, they were, the bluing, the tanks, uh, the heat, everything was altered as they were moving things through very quickly. So this is very crudely made. Uh, let's compare this to the first one we showed. And you can go full circle here. Notice the the fine machining here versus the cog. Notice the uh, high polish finish. Uh, notice the Walder banner versus the AC-45. The crude finish on the slide release. Uh, although these, these, mag uh, these grips are actually beautiful. They're really in beautiful condition. Here you see the front straps. So you see uh, one of the first, uh, excuse me, one of the first to be made and one of the last to be made in the Walder factory. And lucky for you, I'm not done yet, uh, because also Mauser in 1945, uh, they changed their code to SVW. You can barely see that, but that's SVW, which is just the code in 1945, and you can see SVW 45. They made them all the way up to the E block, and then after that, the French took over the factory and continued to assemble pistols from the F block on. I believe there's an L block that was the last of the French put together guns. Um, but this is a dual tone. This is actually, when I first saw it, I, I, I mean, this is in unissued condition. Look at that front strap. Absolutely nowhere. This is blued. This is dark phosphate. This is also a dark phosphate. This is phosphate. Let's take a look at the magazine. It has a U. I don't believe that is phosphate. This is blued. That could be phosphate because it's a, it's a darker phosphate. But you do see um, this uh, 1945, uh, this is made by Mauser. 
and it has the three inspection stamps. But it's one of the last ones to come out of the Mauser factory. Absolutely beautiful. And if you look at the grips, it has that standard uh, black grip, which again, subcontract uh, for Mauser. Okay, we've got one more thing to learn today, and I think this is pretty cool. Um, this is actually a commercial gun, the uh, Mod 38. They also had a Mod uh, HP. Uh, it's a commercial gun, has the Walter Banner, and this is late war, made in 1944. Now, there's a couple things to point out. One is this still has 44, it has a high polish finish because it was made for the commercial market. Now, in 1944, where everything was going for the war effort and Spears was constantly yelling at the factories, I need more, I need more, I need more, uh, along with all the generals, uh, why would they take the time to make a nice high polish finish? Uh, and the answer is these could only have been ordered by party officials, party leaders. Um, sure, they had their PPs and PPKs, but some people wanted the 9mm. And so these are uh, special orders, commercial, late war. Uh, the serial numbers are all in the same uh, basic range. Uh, you do see the, there are no military proofs, there are no uh, police proofs, but you do see the uh, test fire proof here, which is the Eagle N. Uh, it will have a matching, um, it's a hold open inside, I'm pointing here, but it, uh, there's a hold open inside that's numbered, the barrel is numbered, uh, the frame and the slide are numbered, the slide is numbered internally, uh, but you can see that it, it is a beautiful high polish finish. Now the first time I saw one like this, I said, oh it's a shame, it, the, the gun has been damaged. And I wasn't sure if that was uh, done at the factory or if it was done later. The fact that it was blued over, I thought, well, maybe that was an error in the factory. Um, now, since then, I've learned that there is a, a serial number block where every gun is like this. So I discounted, the first one I got, I said, you know what, it's a beautiful gun, but it has a flaw. And I said, yeah, you know, let's knock off maybe 10, 20%. Uh, but now since then, that actually adds value because check this out, these all three came all three of these came from the same collection. Check that out. See the factory flaw? <laughs> That's incredible. So there was a flaw in the uh, cast, uh, you know, the uh, metal casting. Um, I'm not sure how all that works because I'm not a metallurgist, but uh, I can plainly see that these late war, actually this one has one a sm a small flaw there. Uh, also you notice the um, almost the reddish hue on the frame. And that was also common in these late war guns. Uh, let's take a look at the serial number. We see 25,000. We see 25,000. We see a reddish hue. And this one is a Mod HP. Uh, the, they're basically, the Mod 38, P38 and the Mod HP are basically the, the same gun. Uh, the, the marking Mod P38 is slightly rarer. This is slightly rarer, but, uh, and this is probably slightly later. Well, let's look at the serial number, we'll know for yeah, just a hundred a hundred numbers later um, but beautiful guns they have the same reddish grip which were um, made by Walther. Now the magazines should not be uh, Waffen stamped and this one is not. I often will see them with a Waffen stamp mag but um, this one is U marked so 1945. I don't see a Waffen stamp here and the third one also the reddish hue. This is also 25,000, same range. There's a little bit of pitting on this one, but uh, this one is mod P38. So he has three uh, guns, all within 100 uh, serial numbers of each other, all with that casting flaw, all with the reddish hue. Now let's talk about that. I do get people who make comments who correct me all the time, but my understanding is that has to do with how uh, the bluing salts were treated and the heat of either the metal or the heat of the solution. Uh, but in the mid-war and late war, you will see this with the reddish hue. And uh, it's just remarkable in that same period of time that they all will look that way. Uh, which brings me to the grand finale. The last gun I wanted to show you is one of uh, my prize uh, collection pieces. Check this out. Gotta love it. Have you ever seen anything like it? Now I have seen uh, plum frames. I'm going to call it plum. I've seen plum frames. I've seen plum slides, but I've not seen anything like this. And so I had to buy it. Notice the, the correct blue, correct blue here, correct blue here, correct blue here. But 
the reddish blue, and this is uh, 1940, late, same, same date as uh, these P38s, late 43, early 44. You see the uh, proof marks here. Uh, definitely red with the red grip, which just makes it really cool. The screw is, is blued. You can see the extractor here is, is uh, blued, but everything else is red, even the barrel. Check out that barrel. It's red. Let's see if we can see some more. Yeah, it it's kind of has a reddish hue. And, and now for the piece de la resistance, the t uh, whatever that means, the pinnacle, look at the magazine. Red magazine. Blue bottom. Darn it! <laughs> but uh, just be, if you have a red bottom, send it to me. I'll trade you. Uh, this is uh, one of my favorite guns in my collection, but it does show that red red finish. And again, people used to complain about the red. I actually had people say, well, if it's the red finish, that means it's been reblued. Eh, wrong. Hasn't been reblued. This is the original finish. The Germans didn't care. And I think it looks fantastic. Or fantastisch. Hey, thanks for watching. That was a lot of fun. By the time you're watching this, I'm on my way to the show. I hope to see you there. But if not, wait till next year and tell those Gundys I'm coming for you.